Hello friends, in this video, let us derive the transfer function of the AC servo motor. So, what is a servo motor? Servo motor is nothing but a simple electrical motor. When it is operated with the help of servo mechanism, then that is referred as servo motor. So, any electrical motor, when operated with the help of servo mechanism, gives you servo motor. Now, if the motor has control device associated with the servo mechanism is your DC motor, then it is referred as DC servo motor. And if the motor has a control device associated with the servo mechanism is your AC motor, then it is referred as AC servo motor. So here, servo mechanism is nothing but the mechanism employed for controlling the positional accuracy of the motor shaft output. So you are here, you are controlling the motor position of the motor shaft output and the special purpose components employed for your servo mechanisms are one is you are having encoders or you can say speed sensors and the other one is you are having controllers controllers and the third one is you are having bearings to change the speed of the motor now the ac servo motors are the ac motors that incorporate encoders are used with the controllers for providing the feedback circuit and the closed loop control. So these servo motors are positioned to high accuracy. That means you can exactly control the position of the shaft required for the application. Now the difference between your normal AC servo motor, that is a normal AC motor and the AC servo motor is, in AC servo motor you are having the special purpose components, encoders and the controllers. So any AC motor with the which are incorporating encoders and are used with the help of controllers, they are referred as AC servo motors. Now, your AC servo motors are those motors which are used for low power mechanisms. So, generally they are used for low power servo mechanisms and the output power of your AC servo motor moves from a fraction of watts to hundreds of watts and the operational frequency is ranging from 50 hertz to 400 hertz. So, this AC servo motor is similar to your two phase induction motor except for certain design features. So, basically, if you look at the construction of your AC servo motor, so here you are having the actuating signal is provided to the servo amplifier. Here is your actuating signal, and from here the actuating signal we are having a servo amplifier. This is your servo amplifier which amplifies the actuating signal and here you are having the ET, E of T that is a control phase voltage applied to the control phase winding. So this winding is your control phase winding and this winding is your reference phase winding. So let us indicate this is our reference phase winding and this is our control winding. So these two windings are spaced apart in 90 degrees. So they are spaced apart in 90 degrees and the control voltage VC is also out of phase that is out of phase that is, which is having 90 degrees out of phase with respect to the reference voltage that is the constant this voltage is constant AC supply. So to the reference winding you are supplying your constant AC supply and to the control phase winding you are supplying the variable voltage, variable control voltage. Now, to reduce the loading on your servo amplifier, you have to uh, increase the input impedance or we can say the impedance of the control phase winding. So, for those, for that reason, we can employ a tunable capacitor in parallel with the control phase winding in order to reduce the loading on the servo amplifier. So, these are the two windings 90 degrees apart in space and the voltage are also 90 degrees out of phase then a rotating magnetic field is produced on providing supply that is a balanced two phase supply then the torque then you are you will be having a rotor torque and your motor starts rotating. So here the TM is the torque developed by motor where theta is the angular displacement of the shaft and you are having the mechanical parameters J and F0. J is the equivalent moment of inertia referred to the motor shaft and F0 is a viscous friction coefficient referred to the motor shaft. Now here for the AC motor to operate as AC servo motors, the uh, servo motor requires certain features for the 
torque omega characteristics so the servo motor has specific features which should incorporate all the motors that is all the ac motors torque speed characteristics so the first feature is you are having the linear characteristics so one is linear characteristics required another is they should have a negative slope and the characteristic should be parallel to each other they should be parallel to each other for equal and they are equally spaced for equal increments of the control voltage so if we draw the torque speed characteristics for your ac servo motor here we are having the torque speed characteristics generally depend on the ratio of rotor resistance rotor reactance to rotor resistance in your normal two phase induction motor this ratio is kept high in order to obtain the maximum torque uh close to the operating region which is around 5 percent slip so close to the operating region to obtain the maximum torque we are keeping this ratio high and for the servo motors the rotor is built with high resistance therefore we we will get the linear torque approximate linear torque speed characteristics which are required for the ac motor to work as ac servo motor so if you see the characteristics so this will be approximately linear approximate linear characteristics with equal space and parallel characteristics you will get for the variable control voltage being supplied so if i say this is vc1 this is vc2 this is vc3 so where vc1 will be greater than vc2 will be greater than vc3 so here this is your tm and this is your omega so now when speed is zero if i say when speed is zero tm at omega is equal to zero the torque is referred as a stalling torque the stalling torque is the torque when the speed of the motor is zero and this stalling torque is proportional to the control phase voltage vc now from here i can write t naught is equal to kvc which implies my k is equal to t naught upon vc okay so we got k is equal to t0 upon vc and if i obtain the slope m let us say m be the slope of the characteristics negative slope characters negative linear slope characteristics m is equal to it will be t0 so if i say somewhere here i am having t0 and here i am having omega not no load speed so t0 upon omega note where t naught is a stalling torque at rated voltage and omega is a no load speed at rated voltage so i am having the slope now from here from the general mathematics the line equation will be y is equal to mx plus c so from this linear torque speed characteristics i can write tm is equal to my slope m into omega plus where my constant is a t naught but i know t naught is equal to k v c so now the transforming this equation in s domain and we having tm of s is equal to m into omega of s plus k into vc of s now this torque developed by the motor will be equal to the mechanical torque that is so this will be equal to the j d omega by dt plus f not into omega now if i transform this differential equation in the laplace domain then i will be having j s plus f not into omega of s so as the two torques are equal i am making i am writing them as tm of s will be equal to this and this will be equal to this so from here i can write my m omega of s minus j s plus f not omega s omega of s will be equal to minus k vc into s so from here my omega s upon vc s will be equal to k upon k upon j s plus f not minus m so this will be my the transfer function that is the output is the angular velocity of the shaft and the input is the variable control voltage so this is this will be my input 
and the angular velocity omega will be the output. So the Laplace of output upon input gives you the transfer function. Now we can write it in more generalized form. So writing it in more generalized form omega s upon vc of s will be equal to km upon tau m s plus 1 where km is the motor gain constant so this is your this is your motor gain constant whereas your tau m is the motor time constant so this is a more generalized transfer function for your hsr motor so this is motor time constant where your tau m will be given by j upon f naught minus m where your km will be given by k upon f naught f naught minus m so this is the transfer function of your AC servo motor. So I hope you understood well. Please subscribe to the channel. Thank you.